Right, if you have your Bibles, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the power of the church body, part two, because I have preached about this two weeks ago, and Tina also brought us a message last week. And I just want to say that um, in prayer, the Lord reminded me about the power of unity. Tina talked about unity last week, but the Lord said to me, uh, David, without unity, there is no anointing. Because the Bible tells us in Psalms 133 that the anointing comes on the head and it touches the beard and it touches the collar and also it saturates the whole garment because the brethren dwell together in unity. Without unity, there is no anointing. And, and the Lord has spoken through Tina, which is a prophetic uh, mouth to our church and many prophetic people hear about how last year the presence of God was with us. But this year God is saying, my anointing. Is being poured out upon the church but for us to have the anointing of God we need to work at being united being connected being one and that is why I believe that having the message of the church body is critical for us at this time because once we see that the church is not a compartmentalized body disconnected body it's a body of many members and yet united I tell you this God is gonna pour more of the anointing upon this house and I tell you, I've been praying and, I, and God has shown me that this church is going to be huge and, and massive and humongous and having massive impact in the community and nations and cities. But for that to happen, we have a responsibility to really get together and click. Not having our little cliques, not having our little groupies, but we become one family, one body. And Jesus will begin to baptize us with a fresh anointing that is necessary for us to be able to impact our lives and our families and communities, cities and nations. That's what the church is all about. And sad to say that I've been to many churches where there's so many little groups. There's cliques here and there. And uh, the church was never designed to be like that. The church was designed by Jesus to be a family. We come together and we feel accepted, we feel loved, and we feel respected and honored. And even those who've come to church and feeling like they've been rejected by the world, they should walk into this place and feel received and accepted by the church, the people who are born again. But there are many churches, unfortunately, that has, are out there where people going broken, they leave almost half dead. We don't want this church to be like this. We want this church to be a different church according to the design that God has given to us. So the scripture is probably, I think, is on the board. Please read as I read through. And let, us, and let me give you some principles that I believe that's going to help create this unity even more. For as the body is one <clears throat> and has many members, but all the members of that body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, where the Jews or Greeks were the slaves are free and having been made to be uh, the drink into one spirit for in fact the body is not one but many if the foot should say because I'm not a hand I'm not of the body is it therefore not of the body and if the ear should say because I'm not an eye I'm not of the body it is therefore not of the body if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole uh, body were hearing, uh, uh, hearing, where would the smelling be? But now God have set in uh, each member, set, sorry, the members, each one of them in the body just as he please. Verse 19. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? Now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. No, again, the head to the feet. I have no need of you. No, rather, those members of the body which seems to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which think to be less honorable, on these we bestow great honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the parts which lacks it. But there should be no schism or division in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffer, all the members should suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all the members should rejoice with it. Just reading that, I tell you, it just gives you the picture. Do I need to preach? It's clear, isn't it? I probably don't need to preach. I should sit down right now and say, what do you think? 
But here's some points that I believe God has given to me to share with you in the body. Number one, don't compare yourself to other people when you come to the church, when you come into the body of Christ. Because when many people have come to church and they come in with inferiority complex, low self-esteem, looking down on themselves and putting themselves down. Don't do that. People may put you down over there, but it has, you have no right to walk into church with this inferior complex. Because in the sight of God, you are something. You are somebody. And that's why the Bible tells us, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body. Don't compare yourself to me and don't compare yourself to everybody else. Just because you can't preach like me doesn't mean that you have no use, that you're pointless. And just because you can't sing like Connie doesn't mean that you have no gifts. You do have a gifts. And just because you don't, uh, you know, you don't dress up like Tina doesn't mean that you are not pretty. Or walk around with uh, lava lava like Peter doesn't mean that you're not special. Many people have gone to church and compare themselves to everybody because that's how you are treated out there. But when you come to the church, my friend, I don't care how people treat you out there. You are treated with honor and respect in the house of the Lord. Somebody say amen. You don't treat yourself. Don't look down upon yourself. Listen, I know the world out there is wild and, 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 and it's, it's a strange world that we live in. Negativity rule the day, the world that we live in. But when you come into the church, I tell you this. The church is a place where you are lifted and you are blessed and you are reminded of your value and your worth in the sight of God. And that's really what the Bible is talking about. In the body, everyone is special in this place. There is no inferiority and you cannot say, oh, well, you know what, because I don't belong to the body because I'm a foot. Many people say, well, you know, I'm just a foot. I'm, I'm down here below. I walk on dust. No. We need you so that we can have some movement. If there are no foot in this church, how are you going to carry us to the next level? You see, don't compare yourself and don't put yourself down because God thinks a lot about you, highly of you. And it will not be for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the year should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body. Hey, but who's going to do the listening? Don't try to always see like everybody else. Why? Well, I can hear, I can, I can see things in the spirit. And everybody wants to see things in the spirit. Well, somebody needs to hear something. So if you're here hearing, be happy because we need to hear the voice of God. As much as we want people to see things in the spirit, we want people to be able to hear things in the spirit. So there is no comparison in this place. Don't compare yourself to each other. Accept who you are. Love who you are. Because God has given you a special gift to bless the body and the church with. Amen. Point number two. No pride in the church. Some people have come to church with sense of superiority and haughtiness and arrogance. They walk into church. That's what the Bible tells us. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Why would an eye say to the hand, I don't need you? Because... You know, I don't want to say this about prophetic people, but sometimes prophetic people see a lot because they see with the eyes and the, and the spirit. They see a lot. And because they're not grounded to the ground sometimes, I'm not saying anything about the prophetic people here, they get really prideful. And sometimes they just live up in the heavenly realms and they need to be grounded because that's why you need the hand to pull you down, I. Just because you see something and the hand don't see anything does not mean that you're more special than the hand. You need the hand to ground you and earth you so that whatever you see is manifested on the earth. But there are some people who walk into the church and say, you know what? Oh, I saw something in the spirit, eh? Oh, in my prayer, I saw an angel. And everybody's trying to see angels. Well, some people can see things. Some people don't see things. But maybe you're not called to see. Maybe you're, you're called to build with your hands. Maybe you're called to work with your hands. And just because you can see, my friend, don't walk around with arrogance in the church just because you are spiritual and you're prophetic. And some people say, well, I'm just very super spiritual. Be careful that you might become an UFO just floating around the air. Uh, we don't know where you're going to land next time. There's so many UFO Christians floating floating and that's why you represent the church so badly because many people out there are calling the church weirdos and crazy people 
Because that's all they hear you talk about at work and at home. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You ring up your boss and say, the boss said, hello. And you said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know what the boss will do? We'll fire you on the spot. They find out that you go to Breakthrough Church. What a weird Christian. What a weird church. The church is not weird. It's the way you represent the church. You represent it wrong. I had some pastors that called me. You know, I, I told the story how he would call me three times that he's done this. And every time I pick up the phone, he said, and I said, hi, David here. He goes, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, brother. And I'm like, okay, I'm talking to you. That's fine. The next time he rang, I said, David here, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, brother. I'm like, hmm. I'm getting a little bit angry with this kind of conversation because my name is not praise the Lord, hallelujah. My name is David. And he rang the third time. Praise the Lord. I said, can you just shut up and, 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 and tell me who I am? My name is David, not praise the Lord, hallelujah. And some of us have done that out there. And that's why I'm saying, listen, just because you're very spiritual does not mean you're better than everybody else. You need the hand to bring you back to earth. There's no arrogance in the church. There's no haughtiness. And by the way, what you see, you're supposed to bring it to all of us. Not just for you to celebrate the fact that you are super. Super. Yes, there are people. And it's, it's these kind of people that actually put other people down. Well, you know, the Lord said, I spoke to me, an angel. Jesus walked into my room and everybody felt so inferior. Well, how come Jesus come to your room and hasn't come to my room? Fasted for weeks and hasn't come to my room. If Jesus visited you in your room, there's a purpose. And that purpose is to bless your brother and lift your brother up to your level. Not tremble on them. You're quiet in this place. Point number three. The presentable and the unpresentable parts of the body are equal. There's a picture up there. Can you see it? You see how you don't see the lungs and the liver and the uh, what else? The kidneys, the pancreas, and what's that part that people take out of you and you're still alive? The appendix, some Christians are appendix, we can live without you. <laughs> True, isn't it? Some Christians just appendix in the church, remove you and we'll still be okay. But you see, you can see all the unpresentable parts, but guess what? You cannot exist without the presentable. We're equal in value and worth. Because if I could open myself up here, the only reason why you like David Vaca because there's a system inside of me that is functioning. Unpresentable parts, but they are keeping me alive. And there's some people in this church, you may not be on the front line, you may not be on the cover of the breakthrough news. You know what? You may not be a, 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 a church leader or ministry leader, but guess what? You are just as important. It's the people that are presentable in the house of the Lord. Amen. There are stars like Beck Lawton. Everybody wants to sing like Beck. I would like to sing like Beck. I actually would like to have a hairstyle like Beck. But I would be a very lousy Beck Lawton. I just need to be David Vaca. This is me. I'm loud. I'm crazy. I, I pray loud. I speak in tongues. I eat food. I love food. And by the time I see people on the street, I'm like, hello, you know, this is just me. Some people are actually very quiet. They may be behind the scene, unpresentable people, but guess what? It is you that we need the most to keep this church going forward. <laughs> there are administrators in the house. There are those who are just praying. They don't, you don't see them out there, but they are praying for this church behind the scene so that God can move the church forward. If you feel like you're not a presentable part, but an unpresentable part, I'm telling you this, we need you. The lungs is needed. The liver is needed. Everything else inside is needed. But if you are an appendix, we need you. And even if you mess up, we can get rid of you because we can still live without you. Somebody say amen in the house. Don't be an appendix. Be a lung or a liver or something. Everyone here is special. Do you know that? Everyone here, whether you are part of the unpresentable or the presentable. But God has given you something that can really help us. 
the finance of this church, I tell you this, is because there are people who are putting money to the church behind the scene. We don't come out here and call out their names and how much they give, but we know the church is moving forward because there are people faithfully giving money to the church. Nobody talks about you. Nobody knows you, but you are the one that is keeping us going, my brother, my sister. I thank you, and I salute you, lung. I salute you, liver. I salute you because it is you that is keeping us moving forward. And sometimes it's the presentable past that gets the glory because that's what everybody sees. But I have no idea that there's a lot of work done behind the scene that others are reaping the blessings and the accolades and the praise. But it's the people behind the scene that are actually doing all that amazing work. Amen. Number four, life is in the body. Now, I have a knife here. And I'm going to cut my little finger in front of all of you. Tina, hold my mic. No, I'm serious. I'm not laughing. <laughs> hold the mic to my mouth. That doesn't look sharp enough. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to cut my little finger. Are you guys ready? All right. Are the news people outside? They better be outside. This is real stuff. No? Let me demonstrate this. Life is in the body, not in the individual. If I cut this little finger here, <laughs> my little finger will fall to the ground like a knife and after a couple of seconds, it might be wiggling, wiggling, sorry, we're not wiggling, wiggling for a little while, but after a couple of seconds, it will stop the motion and the movement. Why? It's dead. Many Christians think they can live without the body and still be alive. Cut your hand off and I'll tell you the truth. Give it a couple of minutes and you're gone. That hand might be moving on the ground, but after a while it's motionless. That's why I've seen so many Christians come to this church and other churches and they leave the church the way that they shouldn't have left the church and all of a sudden they're going back to the world eating pig's food. The very thing that they have left, they're going back and even doing things worse than before. Now, you may still be alive, walking around, waving your hands, driving nice cars, but in terms of your spiritual life, you're gone. You cannot live without the body. The life is in the body, not in you and as an individual. You may be alive as, a, as an individual, but God designed the church to be a connected members forming one body. Life is in the body. Life is in all of us, not in just you, thinking that you can do it all by yourself. I tell you, we need to be careful because life is in the body, the individual, all you could reap at the end of the day is death. The next point, function, purpose, and responsibility. Do you know what? We have looked at that picture that we had up there, and I tell you this, the lungs only find its function in the body. The hands only find its function in the body. I'll tell you the truth, if you remove the lungs from my body, not only that I'll be dead, but the lungs will be useless and pointless because the lungs function will only be real and active as being part of the body. Many of you here are probably asking God, so God, what is my purpose? What is my function? What is my calling? And some people may Come up with these ideas that, well, I'm just going to go out there and start doing things for God. Why don't you find your function first in the body of the church? And together with the other members of the body, we can change the world. Don't go out there and try to change the world by yourself. Because we find our function and our purpose in the body. Because the lungs were supposed to be functioning within the body. The hands, the feet, the eye, the nose. And a lot of people are trying to change the world on their own. That's my purpose, to go out there and change the world. Find it first in the church, please. And you and the church will do a better work changing the world than you yourself trying to change the world. Our purpose and our function is actually found in the body, in the church. The next one, body anointing. Here's what the Bible tells us in Psalms 133, 1 to 3. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity, it is like precious oil that is poured down on the head, 
running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar. It is the dew of Hermon falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestow blessings, even life forevermore. The Bible tells us here that the anointing is actually falling on the body. It says the brothers coming together, living in unity, God caused the anointing or the oil to fall upon the body. Now let me say this to you because this is something that I've learned from the history of Breakthrough Church. We've had some people that have come to this church and I don't want to go too much into the history, but this is some of the ideas that they brought to us and they say, well, David, God gives everybody an anointing. And I agree with that. God anoints every person. And they also said this thing. I can go out there with my anointing and I can survive without connecting to the church. And I've seen them gone out and I've seen them done great things. But you know what? The very thing that they were doing, even though it was blessed by God in the beginning, has gone in a different direction away from God's original intention. Can I ask you here? Though everybody is anointed by God, but the greater anointing is on the body. You need the body anointing. Add on to your anointing and you can do so much more. What is the anointing? God's divine enablement for you to do great things in your family, in your life, in a community. That's why we could go out there and do something called Icon. And it was so successful because it wasn't a work just for David and Tina, it was the work of many people in this church, even the whole church coming together, and we can see the explosion of God's purpose in the community because a greater anointing on the body creates greater impact and influence in the community. Please don't be too wise in your own eyes and say to us that, you know what, my anointing personally is sufficient for me to change things. Yes, you do have an anointing, but God gives also a greater anointing to the body of the church. When you connect with us and we connect with you, I tell you this, not only that you have your anointing, but your anointing is multiplied by everybody else's anointing coming upon yours. Isn't it great? So we need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that there's a great anointing on the body, not just on the individual. Number seven, growth and maturity. Here's the true saying. And this is what everybody talks about. It takes a village to raise a child, true or false. This is the world today. They were saying that parenting today may not be sufficient with just the mom and dad. It may take a whole family. It may take a whole tribe. It may take a whole village to raise a child. Can I also say to you that it will take also a whole church to raise a Christian? Because you are a Christian does not mean that you're going to grow on your own, even though there is an element of growth and development of, of your own. But you know what? If you want to reach your ultimate development, you need the church to help you grow. It takes a church to grow and mature Christians. You see, when you're down, we're there. When you come to the Connect group, you hear people share their life stories and it blesses you. When you come to church like this tonight, you're hearing a word that is confirming the word that God has given to you. And that is empowering you and emboldening you and making you stronger. Why? Because it is true that it takes a whole church to raise Christians. You can't do it on your own. You need us to grow you and mature you. And we also need you to help us grow and mature in the things of God. And the last one. Eternal life versus finishing your purpose. How many of you here can say that you are born again? Everyone is born again. Can I just ask you that question again? Lift up your hand. You know you're born again. And you know what? If Jesus comes right now, all of you will go to heaven. Because all you need is to be born again to have eternal life. But to fulfill your purpose here on earth, you need a church body to help you fulfill your purpose. Being born again is not enough, guys. Yes, you are going to enter into eternal life, live in heaven forevermore. But what's the point of getting up to heaven and realize that you have not finished your purpose on earth? Because you decided to be too clever and wander around out there and start doing things on your own and got hit by a car. And then you end up in heaven and Jesus said, why are you here? You're here before your time. And we don't want you to end up that way because I've seen a lot of people going down that road. To be born again, yes, we have eternal life. But to finish our purpose on earth, we need the body to help us, take us to the ultimate end of God's call for our lives. 
So I want to ask you here today, what are you going to do from now on? You want to get connected? You want to be part of this church? And here's another thing that I want to say to people. We don't want you just to be part of this church because we're forcing you to it. And we're preaching a message and everybody's like, I better connect to the church so that Pastor David don't preach about this body thing. But if you feel in your heart that God's called you to be part of this church, you need to respond because your life depends upon it. We need the body. We need each other because it will take all of us to be able to change the world together. Amen.